Dr. Alec, welcome to Leadership in Politics. Dr. Abraham, it's always a pleasure to see you. Dr. Abraham, I'm really delighted because, you know, I'm always enjoying to have a conversation with you. Thank you. Likewise, likewise. You're the second guest, the third time. Uh, Dr. Diane was the first one to be the third time on the show. And this right. is our, our third time. So it's a pleasure and honor to have you. I want to show you something. This this one is very special. Oh, yeah. But this is a special edition because it's signed by the author. Thank you. So I have to say, but I'm not signing the book for myself, <laughs> but I still know that. Because, it's a good you, one. because you are the author, ladies and gentlemen. Right. We're going to have a good conversation with the author of The Vision Code, Dr. Oleg Konovalov. A few seconds, and we'll be right back. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Leadership in Politics with Dr. Abraham. On the show with me today is Dr. Oleg Gonavolov, the author of The Vision Code. Dr. Oleg, welcome again. How are you, sir? Thank you very much. Dr. Abraham, thank you for inviting me. That's a great honor, and I love talking to you. Thank you. Likewise. So now we have The Vision Code up and running, and it's making an impact. Congratulations. Thank you. Uh... You know, when I finish this work, what I have learned, I understood. It's not about what I have written. It's about how this work, how this project, book project, impacted me. And mm -hmm. I realized this book impacted me more than anything else I have done in my life. It's, it has changed me tremendously. Mm -hmm. It was really important work to do. Why, uh, why, has it, why has it changed you? I got into the area where no one been really, really going deep, uh, you know, around. It was touched. It was touched on the surface because vision is too big, it's too scary, it's too murky, you know, how to get it. You know, and people were mainly talking about, yes, vision is important. It helps in such and such instances, but that's okay. But what vision is, and... I wrote a pile of questions for myself. Mm. What I want to reveal. You see, I came from the fishing industry background. I understand one simple thing. You either have fish or don't have fish. Something real. Mm. If you don't have it, go back to sea. And so, therefore, I was very keen to turn vision, not just present it nicely, mm -hmm. but to turn it into a practical tool where people could use it immediately, create their own vision, and execute it, which is more important. I like the metaphor of, of a fish, which is bounty, really. And if you have this book, as I read it, I'm thankful that you put my name within its pages. So I read it before it was published, and I know its impact. And I'm so happy that we have this conversation now to talk about its impact. And you're truthful and accurate when you say it impacted you while you're writing it, because when you read it, also it has an impact on the readers as well. Take me to the process, how you thought about to create this book. It's it's amazing process itself, because at first I was looking, okay, what vision is and how I can structure it. And it was like a first draft or first idea. And then I realized, no, I don't like it. I have a great data. I have more than 200,000 words of direct talks of different people, brilliant people, brilliant minds from across the globe. But how, what I'm looking myself, I believe in really great work when it's done in artful way. And I said to myself, why not to take a risk and start looking for a golden ratio of vision? Mm that people could see, see its beauty, appreciate it, and use it, you know, enjoying it. Aha, uh -huh, that's more challenging. That is what I'm after. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not just about, oh, a few scriggles and the book is done. No. When you're looking for something beyond obvious, then you're getting the best answers, the most interesting. And of course, when I have started talking 
it's like a second round of conversations with my respondents. It's a 19 brilliant visionaries from across the globe, from US, Canada, Nigeria, Arab Emirates, Russia, India, UK. You know, when I have started talking to them, guys, I want to reveal that golden ratio. It's changed a tone of the conversation because In people the are sharing their emotions, their practical stories, their wisdom. It's not just like a dry answers for a, you know some kind of an article. Yeah, here we are, and that's it. You know, this is real, real stuff. It's more that's involved. Very it's, amazing journey. It's, it's more involved because you're not only tapping on your resources and insights, but you're also in this book, you talk about this, the history and the stories of other thought leaders and other business people yeah. and insightful people. And they share these ideas and these stories and these visions with your readers and now with the audience. What's important in this sense, vision is about inspiration. Vision is nothing to do with motivation. Motivation is a short push. I'll pay nothing for it. But it's about inspiration. You becoming inspiring for others. And of course, you are inspired. Well, what does it mean, inspiring? It means showing others, I can do and you can do this. So it's very pragmatic in terms of impact on others. So when you find your own vision and you're able to realize it, mentally at least what you're telling us here is you'll be inspired to achieve you'll be inspired to make the difference but not only in the now but in the future in the coming months in the coming years it's even for the next generations the next generation because it's because the future that we're talking about working on the book i realize that am i writing the book for myself no i'm writing for my little son where in 20 years time he would read it and he would be saying, yes, thank you, Dad, for that lessons. Mm -hmm. That's quite important because vision is about legacy, what we would leave behind us for the next generation. So when you, yeah, exactly. And so when you talk about the vision, so you're becoming, a, you yourself, a visionary in writing this book because you're not thinking of your current audience, which they are, but you're thinking also of the future audience, which is the concept of what the vision is. You're thinking of the future and, and generations to come. I like that. This is a concept that we would like to preach. So this way, this is really the first step in creating a vision. Take me into how do you create a vision? Let's say a leader or any individual, doesn't have to be a leader, any person out there listening to this conversation or seeing this conversation. They talk of vision. A vision is a, a strong term and has yeah. different meanings. Let's make it simple. How do you create a vision as simple First as possible? Of all, vision comes when your conscious awareness of a problem you want to solve for the benefit of others reaches its peak. Okay. So it's not just I have a calling, I have a dream. No, I'm really desperate to solve it. That craving wouldn't allow me to sleep. Mm. I'm really desperate to make that difference. And this is a moment when you're having that aha moment. But it must be well supported by learning, listening to people, diminishing your ego, uh, really being grounded to a reality and a broad outlook because it's about wisdom. It's not about being smart. It's about being wise. Mm -hmm. And of course, about being human and using your intuition, your instinct you know, human instinct, because that's about people. In your intuition. Yeah. I'm going to do something different in this time. Let's go ahead into the table of contents, you and I. Aha. Uh -huh. Let's look okay. the book. Look, guys, yeah. this is the book, the vision code. Go ahead and open your book. Where's your book? It's mine. All right. So this is a, let's go and open to the table of contents. Okay. And I'm going to ask you a question from the table of contents. When you said in search of the golden ratio, yeah, in a in a few sentences, our sentences too. What is the golden ratio? What do we say by that? What do you mean by that? What I'm talking about, it's a six criteria of vision. First is stimulus. What is in your vision for people? What how they will benefit from it? 
Okay. If you, it's your personal ambitions, I want to, to create a billion dollars company, that's your purely your personal ambitions. I'm not interested in this. But if you're creating something that would be beneficial for people, they will respond to it. It's about scale. It's about spotlight. So who's putting the, the skin in the game? It's about scanning what, how it's real, how it's grounded to people's pains. It's about simplicity because vision is an elegant thinking about complicated things. And of course, it's about emotions and passion because well, all passion multiplies for each other. It gives heart and emotions to that long lasting, huge space. It's a little planet, mm -hmm. which is beautiful based on our thinking. That is beautiful. You talk about others. Does it have to be about others? Oh, that's a clear distinction. Because if you're thinking only about yourself, mm -hmm. I want to become rich, I want to become number one in the world in something. It's your personal ambitions. No one will support you, in fact, because it's nothing for people, you know. It's about pleasing you, but it, it, it's not a vision. It's, so this personal ambition would not be a, would not be within the criteria of creating a vision. No. You may have a vision for yourself, but as it has to serve others for it to materialize as we're talking about. Absolutely. Okay. Because if you are egocentric, ego kills vision instantly because it makes you blind. You don't see the world. You don't see people's needs. You, you just grabbing everything towards yourself. It doesn't work. Mm -hmm. Why the world should appreciate your vision if it's nothing in it for the world? So ego kills vision. I was talking talking to Gary Ridge. He said ego kills leadership. So ego really kills everything yeah. around yeah. that individual. Exactly. Probably, it kill, probably it kills friendship. It kills oh, bonding. Yeah. It kills social interaction. Because if somebody thinking about himself or herself only, that's not a person you want to have around. You mentioned Gary Rich. He is in the book, right? He's phenomenal. I love talking to him. I know him quite for a number of years. He's brilliant. And uh, I love his response in the forum. My vision doesn't have a period in the end. Mm. That defines why. Why we wake up in the morning, what we do. And in fact, we are here to make a positive, lasting memory for others. It's about others. You know, I have a group of vision leaders which I'm training, coaching, you know, just trying to make them really great global leaders. I have a simple principle. We're here to reveal the greatness of each other. That's about others. I'm a capitalist and I want to serve others. What would this book do to me? You become a pragmatic investor but more successful investor. I recently wrote an article for the Global Banking and Finance Review explaining if you use vision viability test as a form of evaluating, for instance, startup, how to invest in it, and you could see all those six criteria being successful, you know that you're investing not just in, into a short-term or short, short life product, you're investing into vision, which is always a long life. And it captures a part of a market that means your investments are pretty secure. Tell me about the part when you say vision is created by one, and the minute he creates it or makes it happen, it start it belongs to others. Give me give me some I must on that. make others the co-owners of vision by passing them ownership because they must clearly understand that they will be rewarded or getting benefits when this vision is achieved. On every stage of the development, they are co-owners, and therefore they are supporting it, contributing it to it. They're making it more stronger, growing. So you create the vision, it manifests itself when others really work with it. It's a matter how why people are responding to it, because they could see the benefit for themselves, immediate benefits. Uh, plus, they enjoy what they, you know, what they do or what they do in terms of work or what they do as customers uh, or consumers. Of it. They're enjoying it. 
Give me an example of a vision that has failed or a failed vision. Is there such thing as a failed no. vision? If a vision is really strong, it wouldn't fail. It might take a bit longer to create it, right, than expected. It took 15 years for Faisi Farahi, is a CEO of the company Corent, to create a proper SaaS software as a service system, right? It took him 15 years. Now this system is across the globe. It, it's capitalization of it. It's more than $400 billion annual, right? It's a huge, but it took 15 years to, to make it really great. But eventually he created that vision without even writing a single line of coding. That was a tremendous. So it's about vision. You can't, I can't promise you that you will have a result tomorrow morning. It will take a time. You will get through different bumps, but it's fine. You will get the result. Eventually it will happen as long yeah. as you follow up and continue yeah. with your, your persistency. But with, the, with your ambition, you have to be persistent. You have to be committed and you have to be focused. It doesn't, the vision doesn't just happen by itself. You really no. have to put a lot of efforts into it. I'm going to so, continue. Uh, yeah, carry on because you'll find a very interesting chapter. So I'm going <laughs> to continue with the table of contents. So making, first that's guys who have, who have whoever hasn't seen this book yet and order it, please go do, <laughs> please do. I mean, you know, I, you know, when I recommend something, it's always on the spot here. So first we have part one creation, part two, making vision strong. Part three, execution. And under each part, you have three or four bullets, which, like an example in creation, what lies behind the aha moment. So, and then you, in the last part, which is the visionary you, and this is where it leads you to become, to believe in yourself, you become, your vision becomes reality when you have self-awareness. And then eventually you have the 15 commandments of visionaries. I'm not going to talk about the 15 commandments or others. I want people to order this book and benefit explore from it. Explore it. Yeah, explore because it. Actually, I would just... Uh, Give me a few of them. Briefly, I was very keen. Being in one room with visionaries, I was still was very keen to open a window in a way how they think and act. Or their discipline or something like that. No. And therefore, I extracted those prominent those 15 traits. I like the way you put the book together and then the stories. You, you go from your writing and then you go to the story of the, the thought leaders and then you comment on it and so people can learn along the way. Then you have the vision creation, which is conscious awareness, learning, listening, diminished ego, bold thinking. You touched on that a little bit. Instinct. Environment. Environment. Yeah. Grasp of environment. Let's talk about one of them. Which one is? Which one should we talk about you in this? We already mentioned about ego, but I think when we're talking about grasp of, of environment, how I believe that we must be bookwise, knowing how it works in theory, or knowing a lot. We must be streetwise, have a quick reaction to know how to do uh, or behave in different situations. And we must be nature-wise. We must really understand what's going on around us. This is where the environment comes into play. Yes. Uh, it's about being not just friendly to environment, but be part of that environment and really truly understanding, okay, it's not just, oh, it's cold because it's winter, but really realizing what's going on. Because when you understand that you, you come to this planet, for a limited number of years, you must leave something great behind you. An impact, a legacy. Yeah, not a tortured plant. It's something that you must enrich. And therefore, you must understand what's going on around you. Why these birds are singing. Would, would this book help leaders out there and everyone one who is interested create a legacy? There are 12 chapters in the book. 11 chapters have practical forms or questionnaires. So they could physically, every night they could read the chapter and go back to the office and do something real. And of course it has this algorithm which is called caviar, how to create vision. And they could walk themselves 
and their teams through those algorithms and create a vision and execute it. Or if they, even if they have a vision, they could make it, run a test and see what could be improved. Tell me what's inside the caviar. Caviar is a model. It stands, C stands for clarity of creation. A stands for ability because you are about to manage vision, which is much bigger than you, much bigger than your organization. So you must be really strong as a leader, visionary leader. V stands for viability, which we discussed. I stand for influence. So what kind of language do you use to explain your vision? How you communicate your vision? How you share your vision? Which are different things. Because we communicate facts, but we share emotions and stories. And it's about acting, which is an actual execution, which stands on strong leadership. It's nothing about consensus. It's nothing about pleasing people. It's about leading people. And so it's about really focused uh, decision-making, maintaining focus and will. It's about maintaining strong culture. It's about maintaining strong communication. It's being a real strong leader, not to lose an alignment between execution and a vision, because that's a trouble in most cases. And of course, it's about our revitalizing, because you must revise and give a new, fresh life to your vision every, with every achievement, with every stage, to keep it growing, be live and real. So is it, it's an evalu is it an evaluation of sort may also lead to reviving the original thought or vision? Yes, okay. because, for instance, if you've been working on something for three years, right, junior achievement, you know, they're one of the largest NGOs in the world. They're helping 11 million young guys to obtain the first profession. They are revising their vision every three years. And that's fine. That keeps them strong. This is where the R come into play, the revitalization. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Where can people find this book? Amazon. Barnes & Noble. 800 CEOs. I know it's in a retail shop and depends on the country, for instance. I know it's uh, in the UK, for instance, in W. A. Smith, in Waterstones. I know in the US, in an, already in a number of um, bookstores which are open, of course, you know. And so it's, and it's available in most of the countries now because I'm getting messages on LinkedIn from Malaysia to Brazil and from Canada to South Africa. Oh, I got the book. And I love it. Thank you. You know, we're just like, whoa. <laughs> so this is this is a global book. It is. Global book. And I do thank you for coming on the show because the show has become a global show, really. So I do thank you. It's a who's and who in leadership. I thanks <laughs> to you and others. And this book, I highly recommend. This book will definitely change your life, will definitely give you a guidance for to go for, for the next at least 25 years ahead. Thank you. Dr. Oleg, tell me, why, when are you going to go hunting again? Are you going to fish, go fishing anytime soon? I still want to feel myself human. I still want to feel myself part of that nature because I have a couple of ideas for the next projects, but I still want to recharge myself. So and fishing that, is one of them? Yes, it's the best for me because I feel little but important little part of that huge open system. It make you reflect? Oh yeah. It make me really receptive. Makes receptive you, to signals. Makes you receptive to signals? Yeah. Of what? Signals of what? Nature, people, universe, everything. You know, you becoming really, really like a finely attuned sensor. Okay, that is life moving. You could feel mm. that moving, that movement. Serenity always gives you that. So what are you working on? Now with my course, with promoting the book. Tell me about, the, tell me about the course, uh, also about the course. Uh, I have a course. Uh, Oleg Kanavala Visionary Leadership Coaching Certification course. This is for leaders and experienced coaches. I'm training them 
through the, all this process. I'm sharing all the tools and more or less it's like you have holding a book, which is a manual instruction. And a course is a, is actual practical driving, you know. So helping people really. But the main idea of the course is about mind shift. Because it's about attuning people into the future mm -hmm. or thinking about the future. Not thinking about the past, not thinking about something irrelevant, but really focus on the future. That makes them really, really strong as leaders. So I'm helping people to get into a premier league of leadership. They become visionary leaders. Of course. That, that's the main thing. And this is phenomenal. Um, I really blessed what kind of people coming on the course. Uh, I'm blessed just listening to them. They're amazing, amazing people from all over the world. I'm glad you're enjoying the journey and you're making us, making us enjoy it as well. This book was forwarded by Marshall Goldsmith. Is your hero? He's my greatest mentor. I'm in his Marshall Goldsmith 100 coaches cohort and I'm learning from him all the time. One of the great lessons, for instance, learn as much as you can, help as much as you can. Learn and, and help. Learn and yeah. help. He That's also learning. he also coined the term the Da Vinci of leadership. Yes. Oh yeah. Marshall is very wise. Coining this term and naming me the Da Vinci of Vision of Leadership, he actually placed a lot of responsibility on me. Because, you know, it's something like don't play low, play always high, you know. So it's not just a nice title, it's a mm -hmm. lot of obligations. Gives you the drive, <laughs> it's empowerment of sort, when somebody oh, yeah. put this responsibility on you. That's true. That's well, you, true. you are, you have delivered, ladies <laughs> and gentlemen. The vision code is out, pick it up any place that it is sold. I do thank you, doctor, and we'll see you again. Thank you very much. That's a privilege to talk on your show. Thank you. You're most welcome.